galvanic cell. As we discuss, an redox reaction involves a transfer of electrons from the reducing agent to the oxidizing agent. So, oxidation involves a loss of electron or increase in oxidation number. And that reduction involves a gain of electrons or a decrease in oxidation number. So, to understand how a redox reaction can be used to generate a current, let's consider this reaction between um, permanganate and iron. So, this is our balanced acidic equation. So, it is useful to break a redox reaction into half reaction. As we have solved earlier, this is our balance half reaction. So when permanganate and iron are present in the same solution, let's say this is our container. We bought permanganate and iron is present at the same solution. The electrons are transferred directly. So the electrons will be transferred directly. When the reactants are collide, under this condition, no useful work is obtained from the chemical energy involved in the reaction, which instead released as heat. So there is no um, usable energy that obtained in this chemical reaction. So to harness this energy, we have to separate the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent. Okay, so we are going to separate manganese, upper manganese, and iron. Then connect this by a wire so that the electrons will flow through the wires. So with this, the chemical reaction occur at the solution. The electrons are will flow along the wire which is electrical energy. But in this scenario, the, the, the chemical reaction will not sustain. Why? Because after the reaction is finished at the one side, the electron will just stop to um, flow. So in that such case, to sustain the electron flow, the solution must be connected. So we're going to connect the two solution. So by connecting them, the ions now can flow. So this connection might involve a salt bridge or a porous disc. So when we make 
provision for an ion to flow, the circuit is complete. So electrons flow through the wire from using agent to oxidizing agent and ions flow from one compartment to the other to keep the net charge zero. So this device in which chemical energy is charged to electrical energy is called galvanic cell. The reaction in an electrochemical cell occurs at the interface between the electrodes and the solution where the electron transfer occurs. So the electrode compartment in which oxidation occurs is called anode. And the electron compartment in which oxidation occur or, or the reduction occur is cathode. So in the case of promanganate in iron, promanganate is our anode and iron is the cathode compartment, okay? Then also we have this cell potential. So it is a, in a galvanic cell, of an oxidizing agent in one compartment that so the pulls electrons to a wire from a reducing agent in the other compartment so this pull or the driving force for the electrons to flow is what we call potential or cell potential also it also called electromotive force or emf electromotive force or voltage so the unit for cell potential or emf or electromotive force or voltage is volt which were in volt or one volt is equivalent to one joule per column So the instrument used to measure cell potential is a crude voltmeter, which works by drawing by drawing current, drawing current through a non-resistance. 